Hello Keyboard Cowboys. In this video I'm going to reveal the secret mystery developer I posted back on December 8th um, a picture and I said guess who this young developer is and if you click on the image you see this person. This is who many people thought it was, uh, Richard Stallman. You're probably used to seeing him with the full beard and a lot older and I've you know I hadn't seen this image until recently so I thought it was kind of interesting and probably a lot of people you know you might be able to recognize him but um, you know it's kind of out of context so I actually had to take the original image and flip it and also apply a sepia tone to it basically to keep people from just um, with modern website searches, you uh, website search engines, you can actually search for images like on uh, TinEye or Google Image Search and pretty quickly uh, figure out who it was without really doing much uh, guessing or investigation of your own. Um, but there was actually a lot more to this image and I tried to indicate that with some clues. Uh, some people got it pretty quickly. Uh, one particular user, Hecky, um, didn't need any clues and just, you know, automatically, <laughs> I guess, looks into images uh, quite frequently, um, which is really cool. So basically what I'll just kind of go over what you might have used as a strategy to try to figure out more information about this image so if we just get the image and I actually already downloaded it so it's making a dot one here uh, I'll just get rid of the one that I just downloaded I already have it in my shell so something that I do, you know, kind of when an image is interesting and it seems like there might be more to it, uh, is I'll actually look at the image in less or um, in some kind of uh, binary dumping utility like hex dump or OD. And the thing is, less now works so that if you less a image file it detects that it's an image file and it actually pipes the image through like the identify command with image magic so you actually don't see the you see some useful image data like how big the image is what color depth it is and so on uh, what type of file you don't actually see the actual binary data if you want to see the actual binary data you can do something like this and uh, pipe the binary data into less using cat. So you see at the beginning there's some you know uh, JPEG header information that's pretty standard. Even this you know stuff in here is is a typical part of JPEG image headers. And then you have the image. Uh, don't really see anything. Let's jump to the end. So here at the end you know you start to notice that the binary uh, the regular binary data kind of breaks down and becomes a bit more ASCII like and in fact you see this here B64 start and uh, separated by binary character 85 uh, I chose 85 because that's when the GNU uh, foundation or the Free Software Foundation was started and I wanted to separate up uh, this plain text a little bit so it wasn't quite so obvious so you had to do a little bit more uh, so there's a utility you can use called strings which will basically give you by default um, any series of four regular ASCII characters that's printable to the screen um, it, that are in a row and it'll strip out all the extra binary data so you can run strings on this image and at the end you start to see oh wow okay it's starting to look like 
a base 64 message at the end of this. So jackpot, you know, you say, hey, there's some information here. Well, why not just pass this directly into base 64 dash D for decode, just hit enter. And then you, you know, you can paste in what you just selected and then hit control D at the end. And voila, there's a message, a hidden message. This is a picture of R young Richard M. Stallman. Good job on discovering this base 64 encode message. 242424 and a URL to go to, which when going to it, you get this message to congratulate you and to ask you to keep it to yourself. There's a further clue here. Um, Richard Stallman, who used to say, just use enter for your password, it's much easier. Now, if you're really savvy, you're probably, you know, you're not going to stop there. You're probably going to keep going and say, I wonder, you know, if there's more to it than that. So you might look at the source code. Uh, and I have a little message in here, maybe suggesting that you should use curl. And so when you do use curl, you notice that there's, what's this? There's lots of extra white space at the end. And it looks like there's something weird in here. So one thing you can do to uh, kind of decode this is type it into hex dump. And look, there's a bunch of tab characters and spaces. So the idea here was maybe to get a little bit more uh, to give you some more clues. So one approach you could use here is just to replace the tabs with some other character. Or at least that's what I had in mind. So replace the tab with, I don't know, an equal sign. It doesn't matter. And you get this nice ASCII art, there is more clue. So I'd hope that based on some of the clues that I gave, uh, one of which, you know, I, I was encouraging people to look at, um, I was basically posting some clues around the time that I posted this, uh, one of which was how to do ROT13. And, um, using the TR command. So anybody who's, you know, ROT13 encode a message kind of has an idea of, of what messages that a ROT13 look like. And it probably wouldn't take you long to look at this and say, this is probably ROT13, it kind of looks like it. You know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a certain way that things look when they're encoded in different techniques. And ROT13 is one of those that when you see a word that's ROT13 encoded, you kind of, you can kind of tell, you know, that it's ROT13 encoded. So what I intended is for people to be able to see that, that this URL actually had a special message here, and you would ROT13 decode it. So the way you do it is you take, uh, a through Z, and then you translate that to um, N through Z and A through M. I'm sorry. And then do this. So when you ROT13 well, encode it again, which basically shifts all the letters by 13 characters in the alphabet, you get this word, steganography. And for those who do know what steganography is, it would immediately be, hopefully, it would be obvious what your next step would be, which would mean that there's more hidden in the image than just this base th um, 64 data at the end. For those who don't know, my hope was that you'd actually look up what steganography was. And steganography is basically a way of hiding, but you know, basically hiding data within other data so that the very existence of that hidden data is not detectable. And 
in an image the way this is typically done is to use the least significant bit in color data so you know say let's we'll open up we'll open up GIMP here which will take forever so we open up GIMP and you know just get a thing going here basically I just wanted to use a color swatch so you might have let's say you have blue you have a blue pixel so blue is denoted by 00000F and this last F is actually the what's called the least significant bit so if you change that F to just off by one to an E you can actually put data in that last bit of the color data and it won't it will negligibly change the actual color you know I mean it'll, it won't be perceivable to the human eye um, so you can actually you know over a couple of pixels of color data you can actually encode maybe one or uh, two bits of actual data so on a large image file um, you know like maybe 200k you might be able to encode a, a couple K of data uh, which is really cool and there's programs out there that let you do this and actually set like a password for the data and so on so I'll just show you what I used I used a program called Steghide to do that and that's that's a program that's mm, I mean it's available it's one of the only ones that's uh, listed by default in Ubuntu and you know Debian and it's a pretty it's a common one so um, my hope was that maybe you you do some investigating and maybe try a few different ones and and find the right one so stag hide with stag hide it takes a few options and so you give it let me say stego file which is this and you have to give it a command so I have to say extract so here you know somebody might have said okay well what's the passphrase you didn't give that to us and some people I think tried to use the um, this encoded file or steganography uh, but then there was this clue that I said I said it was actually Stallman who said just use enter for your password and you know often one of the first things that uh, programs that are trying to crack passwords check is to see if you set to blank so just hit enter and you'll see hey that was actually the passphrase and it I wanted to make this easy to find the second stage so this is actually the second stage where it gives you this second image and also reveals who it really is so you see Stallman and I had to shrink this um, file down so it would actually fit inside the image because you know this image takes up 1768 bytes um, and I was limited to how much I could fit inside the bigger image I could have made the bigger image, you know, larger to accommodate a larger file, but you know, this gets the point across essentially. So then, um, I revealed at some point that there were actually three stages, and some people weren't sure, you know, where whether they had solved all the stages or not. And uh, people who came to me and said that they had found this, I said, well, there's another stage, you know and so I would hope that you just basically tried uh, steganography again on this image and this presented people with some issues because the uh, smaller image if you don't know the passphrase there's nothing that will really tell you that there is steganography applied to an image so you could you know you could try all the passphrases you want 
And if you don't get the right one, you won't even know that steganography is being used on the image. Um, but I did provide the passphrase somewhere. You just had to kind of go back through your clues that I gave. And one of the clues was given a few times, although you may not have noticed it. Um, the first... The first way that I gave it, and I did, and you'll notice one of the tags I, I gave here initially was Steg, which was short for steganography. And there is actually a valid Twitter uh, hashtag called Steg for people who are um, doing stegan steganography related stuff. So you don't see it here, but I actually posted this original image at. I think it was uh, 3.20... No, it was 11.24 a.m. And the 24 was... Oh, yeah, here. Okay, a tooltip actually shows it. I don't know why they don't actually just show it in the data. So, uh, 11.24. And the 24 was kind of a recurring thing. Um, a few of the hints that I posted throughout the week actually were posted at like 3.24 and uh, so on. The the week of this challenge ended at let me see Unix time I think it was 13 24 24 I'm sorry it actually ended at you know at this 324 date so you know, probably people were like, okay, that's maybe going a little bit too far with it, and maybe somebody wouldn't pick up on the clues. But I didn't want to give it all away. I wanted to make it a good challenge. I wanted it to, you know, to not just be really easy to, to uh, figure out and kind of weed out the people who try really hard from those who, you know, just scratch the surface and don't really go any further with it. Um, and a I rewarded appropriately the people who did go all the way. Um, so, um, let me see. So going back to the initial message, you'll see that I actually posted this, 24, 24, 24, which is 42... 4242 in reverse the answer to life the universe and everything uh, 24 is actually an interesting number um, it's you know it's used a lot of places more than just the number of hours in the day and uh, and so on and the number of months and two years so if we run stag hide again moving right along on the stallman smaller thing and give that the passphrase uh, hmm I think I have an old copy of the image where I goofed up. Let me try this again. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> I thought, I was thinking when I saw this that it was actually printing that out. Uh, what it's actually doing is that when I, when I put the data in, I wrote to it from standard input, so which, which is uh, file handle number 63. So that's why it's actually writing out to a file called 63. Um, so if ever you see the number 63 being used as a file number, it's probably because it has something to do with standard input. 
So if I cat out this file, you see o oh, slash ds. And this was actually you know, supposed to be the last part of the URL. This is actually pretty much the limit of the amount of data I was able to fit into the smaller file. So you can't really fit too much data into a, a, uh, a small image like this. Um, but it, it was enough to actually get people to, you know, uh, go to the next thing, and um, or at least a few people. So in the end, we had uh, three winners: Brimstone, Mr. B King, and Hecky. As I said before, Hecky actually got to. Uh, Hecky is actually a badass. <laughs> he actually, without any clues, automatically knew to check out the image uh, got to the first got through the first two stages so in other words he actually looked at the base 64 encoding uh, at the end of the images uh, image using a a binary file dumper and uh, knew to use steganography to decode it and after talking to him it turns out he really is into steganography a lot and so he was really excited about this challenge uh, a lot of people seem very excited about the challenge, you know, used to do stuff like this a lot more on the internet and they don't really do it as much anymore. So within the first uh, two hours he actually uh, got through the second st stage, but at that point he, he took it really far and he started going way beyond the type of techniques that I use for hiding data. Uh, and he kind of got ahead of himself. Um, and you know how some people sometimes they they make something too complex um, and I was trying to get him to think a little bit simpler <laughs> about the problem maybe I I should have made it more complex but he was using like image analysis and all this stuff and I thought that was great and it kind of gave me some feedback about what people might try in challenges like this so that when I do them again you know, I have more ideas and have a better idea of what people will do and what they won't do. Um, but you can see that, you know, too bad this isn't uh, 1337. <laughs> hey, that's just the way the numbers worked out. So 1330 unique IPs download the uh, mystery developer image. Um, I only count about tw 20 that actually did it with curl or wget. That doesn't mean that only 20 people actually tried to investigate the image. It just means that that's the way they saved it. So 27 people got to this rot13 encoded uh, page. There was also an earlier version of the image that had this and I, uh, I changed the name so that I could keep track of who went to the earlier one, who went to the later one. But they both went to this final uh, ds.html. So only three people out of 1330 people actually went all the way to the end and followed you know, things to the end. There were more than 27 who actually um, you know, suspected that you know, kind of were into it and playing. Maybe there were about a hundred or so, um, but you can see steganography seems to work pretty well because you know, in a room full of geeks, essentially, <laughs> not many people actually even tried. So I, uh, it was very insightful um, to see, to post this challenge and see how it all played out. All right, well. Sometime in the future I'll post another challenge and we'll see how that one works out. Now that you kind of have an idea of what the techniques are, um, hopefully you'll be able to get through the first couple stages and I'll have to make the remaining stages a lot more difficult or at least uh, use different techniques. So, till next time. <laughs>